Real Jesus broadcast brought to you by the Jesus Only Broadcast and Network located at www.jobn.tv where you can go and see and hear the preaching of the Apostles' Doctrine of Christ, the Jesus Only Doctrine. In Ephesians 4.11, Jesus gave gifts unto men. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry, and we're going to be talking about the work of the ministry. Though a wise man think to know the work of God, yet he cannot attain to it. God will do a new thing in the earth. Some woman shall come for some ad. God said, I do a new thing. Though a man tell it, yet they will not believe. So radical a change. So dynamic a move of God that only the ones that are in God will know. Walking in the light as he's in the light, that it is the present truth before the second coming of our Lord Jesus, the second time without sin unto salvation. Well, as we get into this work, it's a strange work and bring to pass his act, his strange act. We'll see that it all literally is founded upon the rock. The rock, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Christ being the rock. As we see here in uh, Ephesians 4.11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What we're going to be focusing on is the work of the ministry, the ministry of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, that he is the head, we are the body of the Christ. And no man's ascended up to heaven, but he came down from heaven, and the Son of Man which is in heaven. But when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. It includes the body of Christ in the kingdom of God, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's to bring us to the knowledge of the Son of God. The knowledge there is not general knowledge, not knowing Jesus after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It is a epigonosco in the Greek, that epi is a higher glory than what it is in Pentecost glory by just receiving the Holy Ghost. The knowledge of having the Spirit of God, knowing Him after the Spirit is gnosko. This knowledge of the Son of God is epi gnosko, much higher glory. It's pressing toward the mark for the prize of that high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This is as prophesied by the prophet Hosea, that come and let us return unto the Lord. Somebody said, we're already there. The Lord, notice this capital L, capital R, capital D, which is the tetragrammaton, which is a yod ha wah or Yahweh, or Jehovah. The true God and eternal life, and there's no other Lord except Jesus Christ. For every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the Father. He didn't go to the glory of the Son. He went to the glory of the Father. How's he going to do this work? Well, for he hath torn, he will heal us. He hath smitten, he will bind us up. After two days. Now, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. From the time of Golgotha, the cross of Jesus, Calvary, has been two days. After two days, he will revive us. That would be after 2,000 years. Well, now we're in 2017. We're in now in the third day. In the third day, he will raise us up, the body of Christ, and we shall live in his sight. We shall know, even as we're known of him, before the second coming of the Lord, without sin and salvation, for the salvation of his saints, God will do a work. It is a strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. During that time, then we shall know, if we follow on to know the Lord. That's the knowledge of the Son of God. And the Son of God is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. Until one has that revelation, then they do not have the revelation of Christ. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, 1 John 5, 1. We find he soever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory to overcome the world, even our faith. The faith is based upon the knowledge of the Son of God as the Christ, the revelation of Christ. This Lord is going forth, Jesus, prepared as the morning, the morning star. 
Weeping endureth for a night, but joy cometh in the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain. Not the second coming without sin and the salvation and the second advent, but that rain that will bring forth a harvest. We've had the Pentecostal harvest. That was the former rain, and we see that in the book of Acts. That former rain is Pentecost. But he's going to come bring to us not only the former, but the latter and former rain. That latter rain is that rain of tabernacles, and they will not be Pentecostals. They will be tabernacle Yes, tabernacleists are the ones that go into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is the work that is Jesus, the work of the ministry. As we see about this work in Isaiah 28, it is a strange work. <clears throat> this is that stone. It's a tried stone. It is the rock. It's the foundation of the church. Upon this rock, and I will build my church, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. <laughs> Judgment, God will lay to the line. There's the line. The line's that horizontal. And uh, he says, righteousness to the plummet. It will give us the height, depth, length, and width of Christ and the knowledge of Christ. In the righteousness, he is God, proceeded from the Lord. He is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty, of which is only one. There's one body, one Lord, one faith. There's one Lord. But the Lord, which is the invisible spirit of God, made himself a body of flesh and blood as the Lord. This Lord is Adon. It is Messiah. It's a man who is God. It is the, the Lord revealed in a body of flesh and blood. So no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, Jesus proclaiming that he is in heaven while talking with his disciples there in shoe leather. First, it takes us in righteousness. What is the righteousness of God? That he came from God, came into the world, uh, and then was made flesh. That word was sent. He sent his word, the word uh, the, there made flesh and uh, revealed the only begotten Son of God full of grace and truth. After he worked, Salvation, redemption in and of himself alone. God was in Christ reconciling the world. And to himself, he went back to the glory of the Father, the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. And because we do not know the Lord, we must return unto the Lord, the true revelation of Jesus Christ. And that is the foundation of the church. It's judgment to the line and righteousness to the plummet. The plummet is the vertical going the height and depth of who Jesus is in his glory, humiliation, coming into the world, working salvation in and of himself, and going back to his former glory. The hail shall sweep away the refuge of lives. God's got a broom. It's a beast of destruction. That hail in the last days, that hail, wind, fire, that literally performing the work of God in the last day, Psalm 148, the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. Now, evil will come in like a flood. It will wash away and separate the righteous from the wicked, the holy from the profane, and he that serves God versus that he does not serve God. We're going to see that the Lord himself will rise up as in Mount Perizim. He will be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work. Now, let's take a look at that work. It's a strange work. And bring to pass his act, his strange act. This is judgment. And judgment must first begin at the house of God, and the righteous scarcely be saved. Where shall the end of the sinner and the ungodly appear? The ones that mock at this, be not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. That's the bands of your heart, just like he did Pharaoh, harden his heart. What is it? I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption, a consuming fire. Why? Why would God turn and literally judge this earth by fire? Well, it will burn up all the wicked. It will burn up all those things that are man-made that is not of God. We find in Hebrews 12 that the Lord hath promised he will not shake earth only, but also heaven this time. 
that all that can be shaken may be removed. That's by the besom of destruction. May be removed as of things that are made. Every man-made doctrine will be literally washed away, swept away with the besom of destruction, the overflowing scourge passing over, the water literally overflowing the hiding place, no place to hide. The truth will only stand in that day. And these days of the last days are upon us. As we see here, that consuming fire is to sweep away the refuge of lies. For the Lord hath promised, and will not turn from it, that he hath promised, and yet if he promised, he will do it, that there will shake not only the earth, but also heaven, that all that can be shaken may be removed as of things that are made, so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain, seeing then that we have a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. This is determined upon the whole earth. O earth, 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 hear you the word of the Lord. Give ye ear and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. Does a plowman plow all day to sow? Are we just going to sow the good seed of the word of God? Is there not going to be a harvest? Doth he open and break the clouds of his ground, that, that uh, fallow ground, some on good ground, that ground being the heart? Is he just going to preach all time? After he's made place the, plain the face thereof, he casts abroad the fitches and scatters the common, and cast in the principal wheat and the appointed barley. That's the harvest, that rye and rye in their place. For God doth instruct him to discretion and does teach him. That's a knowledge of God. The fitches are not threshed with a threshing instrument, neither is a cartwheel turned about upon the coming. The bride, the church of God, will not and is not appointed unto wrath. But judgment will begin at the house of God. There is a difference. The fitches are beaten out with a stout and the coming with a rod. This is a rod given to me, Revelation 11, uh, saying, Rise, measure the temple of God, and the altar of them that worship for him. The temple of God, the naos, that literal spiritual temple, which temple we are in the body of Christ, will be measured, and that measure is uh, Jesus Christ. Bread corn is bruised, just as it was Jesus uh, uh, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. The body of Christ uh, will do and be in the same because he will not ever be threshing it or break it with the wheel of his cart nor bruise it with his horsemen. That is the wrath of God that is appointed only upon the wicked. This cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. What work? The work of the ministry the work of Jesus Christ uh, that he will manifest and reveal in the last days. Take a look here. In Zechariah 3.1, there's got to be a change. A change is going to come in the, in the body of Christ, coming to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. And we find here that Joshua, Yeshua, that is uh, Jehovah is salvation, the high priest. Now, this is the priesthood, the king priesthood. That we are called, the body of Christ is called as kings and priests unto the Lord our God, and we will reign with him in the earth. Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand, and we're made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, four and twenty seats in heaven with the four and twenty elders. That is the church of the living God. That when God's about to move on the church, Satan is there at that right hand to resist him. The Lord said unto Satan, God himself, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem, which is above the mother of us all, the church of the living God, the church and assembly of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. Is this not a brand plucked out of the fire? We're all going through the fire. Though who can abide that day of his coming and abide that fire? Only he that is righteous, only he that is holy. Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. He was still down in the flesh. He still had on sackcloth, and he stood before the angel, and he answered and spake to those that stood before him, take away the filthy garments from him. That's all the righteousness of uh, 
uh, man himself thinking that he's done the right things. All of our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. And take those filthy garments from him, that corporate body of Christ, and say to him, Behold, I've caused thine iniquity, not sin. Sin's a transgression of the law. He that knoweth to do good and doeth not to him, it is sin. But iniquity is missing the mark, pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Not being led of the Spirit, the meetings are led by the Spirit of God. These are the sons of God. Cause that iniquity to pass from thee. What? Come and let's return to the Lord. Return to him. So he said, we're already there. No, a higher glory to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and to a perfect man. This is a work that God's going to do. Why? Because we're going to have a change of raiment. We're going to, we've wore the earthly now. We're going to wear, wear the heavenly. And uh, there has to be a work. A work of God. The last sealing of God is in the forehead. In Revelation 7, seal the servants of our God in their forehead. Now, there are three different engravings. The engravings of a signet. The signet is a sign. Jesus is the sign given to the people. The Alaf Tav added to that sign, who Jesus is, and the A to the Z, or the Aloft through the Tav in the Hebrew ABC theory, which is the longest chapter in the Word of God, is the signet. And in the, that signet or that sign is Jesus Christ revealed in and through you, the body of Christ, each individual member in particular. And that's, that's a sealing, it is a sealing or an engraving of a signet. The first is according to birth. We find that up on, in uh, Exodus 28, on the high priest's garments of glory and beauty, that upon the high priest's shoulders, two onyx stones with six of these tribe, tribes on each of the onyx stones uh, on the left and right shoulder, according to the birth. This is where you came into God in repenting and being baptized in Jesus' name, receiving the Holy Ghost, according to birth. That is uh, the children. I've written unto you, children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. Then there is a second. The second uh, engraving of a signet is up on the breastplate. Now that breastplate is individual, not all the, uh, the same colors. It's diversity of work. Whatever God has called you to do, we must do. Each individual member, God have put the more abundant honor on the less comely parts of Beno Chisholm or division in the body. That is another engraving of a signet. That is a feeling of signet. I have in you engraved in the palms of my hands and loved you with an everlasting love. That signet is nothing but Jesus Christ working in and through you, the body of Christ, us on a wheel. That wheel is gold, gold. The thaw, the loft, tov is that sign. Jesus working in and through you, God working in you, both the will and the do of his own good pleasure, working out your own salvation with trembling and fear. That breastplate is that second engraving of a signet. This is the work that you do and your calling that you have in the body of Christ that only you can do, no one else but you. Not called just to sit on a pew, but to literally work in that body according to whatever God's will is for your life. The last and that third final engraving of a signet, the final sealing, the final work there is in that mitre of the priesthood or in the forehead. And this is that sealing we're going to see in seal the servants of our God in their forehead. And we're going to see that is exactly what is happening here with Joshua, the son of Josedek, and Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel. Joshua, all those that are called on the name and called by the name and have taken on the name of Jesus by invoking that name in baptism. For as many as been baptized into Christ has put on Christ, taken on the name Jesus. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. You're called by his name. That is Acts 2, 38, 4, 12, 8, 16, Acts 10, Acts 19, all were baptized, not Father, Son, Holy Ghost, those are titles, but the name of Jesus Christ. And you that are in that body of Christ that know this truth, they're born of the water, baptism, and of the Spirit, receiving the Holy Ghost, and this is your final 
etching. It is the final engraving of a signet. It is sealed in their foreheads, uh, this miter upon the forehead of uh, the high priest. And we find that here, that's that final little sealing, seal the servants of God in their forehead. We see that Exodus 28. It is the engravings of a signet up on the mitre, which is the crown of the priest. When we see here, it said that take, let's set a fire, fair mitre upon his head. Why? Because that is the final sealing of our servants, of the servants of God in their forehead. Set a fair mitre upon his head, clothe him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by, and the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou wilt walk in my ways, walk in present truth, you walk in the light as he's in the light, and if you will keep my charge, keep my commandments, he that loveth me keepeth my commandments, and the faith is to have the testimony of Jesus, then thou shalt judge my house, and shall keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among the, these that stand by. These are crowns of memorial. We'll find that this will be carried over into the millennial as we see in these crowns for, of memorial. These Jesus, Jesus called people, or Joshua, the ones that are called by the name of Jesus Christ, here now, Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows, that's you and me in the body of Christ that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. They are that the instruments of judgment that God will use in the last days before the second coming of the Lord, uh, going through the fire, which will separate the righteous from the wicked, the holy from the profane. Then he says, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. The whole, what is that? That's a stone, that's a stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. That is the rock. That rock is the revelation of Christ. That stone that I've laid before Joshua, one stone shall be seven eyes. What are that? The seven eyes are the seven spirits of God, which is the Lamb of God, that is the Spirit of the Lord and His glory. I will engrave the engraving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will move the iniquity of that land in one day, that's the day of the Lord, children being brought forth at once, the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall you care, call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. There is a work of God that will bring us to that sealing, to that engraving of a signet, and we're going to see that here in Deuteronomy, that the Song of Moses, as written in Revelation 15, we're seeing that begin in Deuteronomy 31. Moses, therefore, wrote this song the same day, taught it to the children of Israel. It spake, Moses spake in the ears of the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. What is it? Is that they will know and learn to fear the Lord our God. There's only one Lord. That Lord is Jesus Christ, which is, was, and is to come, uh, the Almighty. He is the Father of glory. He's the root, the Father, and the Son, the offspring of David. He is the only God and eternal life. He said at this point there, there's going to be many evils and troubles befall, and this song will testify against them as a witness. The righteous will stand in that day. They will go through the time, times and a half, three and a half years and 42 months of great tribulation, which will literally purge out the iniquity out of the church, uh, coming to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, for 1 Peter 4, 1, Thee, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, be ye therefore likewise minded, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. What is it? Here he said, Joshua, here we have Joshua again, the son of Nana charge. Why? Because Joshua, be strong and of good courage, for God must go with his people into the land that is given to you, that you're sworn unto your fathers, as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, etc. Thou shalt cause them to inher inherit it. The Lord, he it is that goeth forth before you, he will be with you, he will not fail you. He will never forsake you. That's the Lord Jesus Christ that's with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. And there's not another. 
This is the song of Moses. Notice that it says uh, it contains the rock. All of it is about the rock to separate their rock, which is a false Christ, from the true rock, which is Christ, the little R-O-C-K being a false Christ, and the capital R-O-C-K being the true Christ. And uh, this, oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end in the last days uh, and the body of Christ. We're going to urge you to take advantage of the gift this month as it goes into this false rock, this false Christ, this false Jesus that many will come in my name saying I'm Christ and shall deceive many, many false prophets entering into the world. We've been talking this week about the work of the ministry. If you've been tuning in, you'll see that there's a work, a consuming fire in the last days. It's a work that is a strange work in God, bring to pass his act, his strange act. Don't mock at it, lest your bands be made strong. For I've heard of the Lord of hosts a consumption decreed upon the whole earth. That is the consuming fire. We mentioned in the last broadcast, why will God do this? Because he will judge this earth by fire. He is a consuming fire. The consumption decreed will overflow in righteousness, Isaiah 10. Isaiah 28 talks about this strange work and bring to pass this act, this strange act. This water over flooding the hiding place, no place to hide. It's going to literally surprise the hypocrite. This is a move in the work of the ministry in the last days that we have seen in Ephesians 4.11, that God gave gifts unto men. The Lord Jesus gave gifts unto men. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. To you all, we all come into the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God. That's coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, and to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ growing up into him in all things. That's being literally led into all truth and all knowledge is of the Lord, which the Holy Ghost will lead us into all truth. Well, this is that work that we are approaching to now. Oh, that they were wise, that they would understand their latter end to the law, to the testimony. If any speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. What is that law? It's the law of the spirit of life. What is the testimony? The testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19, 10, there was a man there. John saw the man. If anyone knew the Lord, it was John, the apostle, the disciple, John, the beloved disciple. His name literally meaning Jehovah favored. He was about to bow down to worship the man. The man said, see thou doest it not. I am of thy fellow servants and of thy brethren. I'm one of the church members which have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy to the law and to the testimony. The testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy. The revelation of Jesus Christ is now being revealed unto his servants to show unto us things which must shortly come to pass. That is the testimony. In the words of the book of this prophecy, which is the last book of the Word of God, it reveals Jesus Christ, come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, he will heal us. He hath smitten, he will bind us up. After the second day, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up. We will live in his sight. If we follow him to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning. He will come to us as the rain, former and latter rain, in the first month. There's a latter rain before the day of the Lord. Not on the day of the Lord. It consummates on the day of the Lord. It completes on the day of the Lord. But there is a time, times and a half, three and a half years, 42 months, uh, in the fulfilling of Jesus' week, there in the testimony of Jesus. It literally confirmed the covenant with many for one week, and for the overspreading of abomination, make it desolate, and that determined will be poured out upon the desolate. What are we saying? You, the body of Christ, is coming to the greatest work and the greatest revelation of God. Jesus Christ that has ever been uh, since there was a nation. True, it will be evil times, and that will be a time of trouble such as has never been since there was a nation. We realize that. 
But we also realize that when evil comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against it. And the greatest revelation and move of God that this world has ever seen in this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world for a witness in all nations, and then the end will come. Let's take a look here as we see in Deuteronomy 32 about the Song of Moses. That Song of Moses, if you've been tuning in, you notice that in Revelation 15, that they sang the Song of Moses and the Song of the Lamb. But the Song of Moses is kind of like bookends. They came out of Egypt in Exodus 15, and they sang the Song of Moses. Then, when they're about to go over the Jordan River after making all the wilderness journey of 40 years, then Moses said, write this song and put it in a book that they may hear and understand their latter end. As we see here, it says, a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, they would consider what? Their latter end, the last days, the end of days. And we're going to focus on this rock. Their rock is not our rock. Now notice that this rock, this small case, R-O-C-K, is not our rock, and that is a capital R-O-C-K. This is a false Christ, something less than the Father, something less than the Word, something less than God, God Jr., and this rock is the Lord God himself. This is Jesus only, the true rock. And that rock is Christ. Matthew 16, Jesus asked his disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say, You're John the Baptist. Some say, Isaiah, Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. That's what this is. This is, this is uh, that small R O C K is a false Christ. They come in the name of Jesus, but they don't give him the glory of the Father. They don't call him the fullness of the Godhead. They don't call him the Word, the Everlasting Father, something less than that. They will not give Jesus the glory due unto him in his name that he is Jehovah, is our salvation. Therefore, this rock here will be judged and separate that rock from the true rock, and God will do this by judgment. Because when judgment's in the earth, men will learn righteousness, that he is God, Proceeded from God, the word that came in there into the world was made flesh and went back to God, uh, back to his former glory. And this is the work of God. It's the treasures of God. And this is the revelation of God. It is a revelation of Christ himself, as in Colossians 2, and full acknowledgement of the mystery, the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. What is that mystery? And why would God speak in parables, in Proverbs? Why not just say, show plainly what his work is? Because only those of a pure heart are going to see it, friend. That's why. Because we must, when we seek God, seek for God with our whole heart, in that day we will find him. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this. Understand what? The song of Moses, the work of God. This rock versus a false rock. This Christ versus a false Christ. Their rock is not our rock. Why? How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except the true Christ had sold them and the Lord shut them up? Why did the Lord do that? Because they did not give him the glory due unto his name, unto his person, unto his work who he is in essence, his intrinsic glory, dignity, honor, that he is the Father of glory. He is the great God and Savior. He is uh, the everlasting Father, the Elohim, the El Shaddai, the Jehovah Lord God Almighty. And every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty to the glory of the Father. Why? Why were they getting chased? They thought that they were right, but now they're getting chased. 10,000 to flight. Why? Because their rock is not our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Why? Their wine, it's when well, somebody's with well, wine, that's an intoxicating word of God. There's a spirit called Baal. 
There's a spirit called Jesus. The spirit of Baal will prophesy smooth things, prosperity. Oh, you will have peace, peace when there is no peace. Jeremiah 4, God put it this way. Speak God, Jeremiah speaking to God said, Lord, it is as if you have deceived this people, saying, Peace. And behold, the sword reacheth unto the soul. Yes, that's exactly right, because they prophesied by Baal. Baal is an unction. Baal is a spirit. It prophesies. It talks in tongues. It talks and, it, and, and, and all brings peace and all prosperity, but no cross. A crossless Christianity. No cross. No denying of yourself. You can have everything you want, and God's going to give it to you. You don't have to deny yourself. You can have a party, be rich toward yourself, and still make heaven. When uh, Jesus said, the grounds of a rich man brought forth plentifully, and uh, he said, what shall I do? For I have much goods. He said, I don't know what I'll do. I'll pull down my barns, and I'll build greater. Well, that's a good businessman. Then, I will say unto my soul, so take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry, for thou hast much goods stored up for many years. That night, a voice came from heaven saying, Thou fool, thy soul is required of thee. Why? Because he's a good businessman, because he went after prosperity, because he went after money, because he provided for his family, because he did all these things? No. Thy soul is required of thee. Why? So is he that is rich toward self and not rich toward God. For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. That's the reason Jesus said in Luke 12, sell that you have and give alms. Oh, somebody said, well, I don't have to give alms now. I'll just sell that I have. Well, it's all God's anyway, so I don't have to do anything. Jesus sold all those that followed him, sold their possessions and followed him, forsook all and gave up all. Jesus stated, except a man forsake all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. But we don't preach that in the churches. If you do that, you're in a cult. <laughs> they don't understand that the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, that will soon be the bride at the marriage supper of the Lamb, literally love him enough that they literally forsake all that they have and follow Jesus. Not only did the disciples do it, but the church, the Pentecostal church, in Acts, the second chapter, all that had houses of the land sold them, laid them at the apostles' feet. Somebody said, well, everything I got's God's anyway. Well, then, uh, why don't you say, sell that you have, Luke 12, give alms, provide for yourselves treasures in the heavens, where moth and rust are not corrupt, thieves do not break through and steal, for where your treasure is, there's your heart also. You want to see what a man follows? Uh, see where he puts his money in his pocketbook. Take a look right here. This is uh, the poison of dragons. Uh, it's the crude venom of asp. Why? What is this? Take a look at the work of God in Deuteronomy 32, 34. Is not this laid up in store with me, saith God, and sealed up among my treasures? What is a treasure? Sealed up among my treasures. So I said, that's not New Testament. Yes, it is. The whole book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, the judgments, the seals, trumpets, and vows made manifest in the earth. By thy judgments are made manifest in the earth. They sing a song of Moses, a song of the Lamb. Where? In Revelation 15. It's the judgments of God. He's telling us why here. In the song of Moses. That's the reason song of Moses is in the New Testament in Revelation 15. That is uh, the song of Moses is a Shurhakadash, which is a feminine song. It means it is in uh, uh, progress, progressive progressive glorification, a work in process. The song of the Lamb is finished work you've overcome, and now enter thou into thy joy. Uh, why? Because well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've overcome, now you have been clothed, and you now have eternal life. We have eternal life now, but in that day where we receive uh, our new Bodies, heavenly bodies. What is this? This is not laid up in store of me, sealed up among my treasures. What is that treasure? Well, let's take a look at Colossians 2, the full acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. There's a mystery there. It's a mystery of God. It's a mystery of the Father. It's a mystery of Christ. What is that? Well, take a look at Colossians 2, verse 2. In whom, in him, in whom are hid. 
Why did you hide it? Because it's a treasure. You got to find that treasure. In whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Let no man deceive you by any means. What's well, a deception? It'll be against that rock in the last days of false Christ. It'll be a false God. It'll be a false rock. Not the capital R-O-C-K, but a false rock. It'll be religious. It'll prophesy by Baal. It'll be in Jezebel. It'll go after money. The love of money is the root of all evil. And they will bring members in and by the thousands and hundreds of thousands by a money, greed, devilish, sensual, having not the Spirit of God. A crossless Christianity, if you will, going after money rather than Jesus. And you can't serve God and mammon. Either you hold one, hate the other, despise the one, and love the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, this is laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures. What's a treasure? It's a revelation of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. If it's not laid up among my treasures, what? that's a mystery. For in him dwelleth, how's this permanently? All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That is Colossians 2, 9. There's your mystery right there revealed. In Jesus, Jesus alone, dwelleth, or how's this permanently? All the fullness of the Godhead bodily bodily, one body. Well, what's he going to do here? God says, to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. The day of their calamities at hand, the things that come upon them make haste. Why? What is this? Judgment. When judgment's in the earth, men will learn righteousness, but it takes judgment. And that's the reason Song of Moses in uh, Revelation 15 says, they sing a Song of Moses, Song of the Lamb, for thy judgments are made manifest in the earth. Why? The judgment must first begin where? At the house of God. And the righteous scarcely be saved with difficulty. If that happens, where shall the end of the sin and ungodly appear? Why? What is he saying? What's the work of God? What's his strange work? What is this strange act? The Lord will judge his people, not the wicked, his people. We're going to be judged at by fire. And he's going to repent himself for his servants. Sealing the servants of our God in their forehead. What? That mitre's crown, kings and priests. When he sees that their power's gone, no more live ceased. We're going not in our own labors, but ceasing from, from, from our own labors. That's at Hebrews 4. If Jesus had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day. He spoke of another day when, uh, therefore, there remaineth a rest to the people of God. The everlasting Sabbath, the an eternal rest. He's going to repent himself for his servants when he sees, he sees their powers gone, and there's none shut up or left. What is that? None in a hiding place. No hidden works of the flesh and leaven over here. That's the reason Jesus said, I'll search Jerusalem with candles. Well, what do they do on the Paschal Lamb? They're getting ready for the Passover. They would go through the house with candles and search for any leaven to be cast out. And they would search it with candles. Well, Jesus said, I'll search Jerusalem with candles. Well, what's the, the, the spirit of man's a candle of the Lord? And then, uh, punish all them that are settled on their leaves. What does that settle on their leaves? They have leaven. We haven't purged ourselves from dead works to serve the living God. We have not perfected holiness, sanctifying ourselves, both spirit, soul, and body, in the fear of God. We cannot serve God in mammon. So he is doing a work here that's going to separate the true from the false, for the wicked from the righteous, from the holy from the profane, for those that serve God versus those that do not serve God. And then, then God's going to say, where are their gods? Where are this what you thought was God? You came in my name, Jesus, and you deceived many. And their rock, that false Christ in whom you trusted. You trusted it, just like the prophets of Baal did against Elijah. You believed it. What is the bottom line? God wants us to see now that I, even I, am he. There's only one God, neighbor. That Jesus Christ is the Father of glory. There's not another. The work of God will prove that in the last day. Nobody said, no, 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 the Son of God is not the Father. Yes, he is. The Son of God is the redemption office of the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. That's the reason Jesus said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? John 14. John 8, 13. He goes on, John 8, 24. He said, if you believe that I am he, the Father, you will die in your sins. 
But that's exactly what he's going to bring judgment on there. Yeah, I want you to see and reveal now that the revelation of Jesus Christ, see now that I, even I, am he. And there's no God with me. There's no God sitting on the right side of me, upside down and round. Beside me, there is no other God. I know not any. He is the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah 44, 24, he's the one that spanned the heaven by myself and the earth alone. No angels, nothing. Just God himself spoke the word. There it is. Who is he? Isaiah 43, 10 says that thus saith the Lord. That's the Lord Jehovah God Almighty and my servant whom I have chosen. Somebody said that's God Jr. That's the son of God and that's the father up here. And that servant is the son of God that is going to bring us to the father. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. That's what he's saying right here that this Lord, that Lord there is the Lord God that I am he. There's no God with me. Come and let us return to the Lord. We've missed the mark, folks. We've missed the mark. But God, there's a, there is a cry going out through the land. Come and let us return to the Lord. For he hath torn, he will heal us. Somebody said, God didn't do that. Jesus said, I kill, I make alive. Shall there be evil in the city, and now the Lord God hath not done it? He's a sovereign God in all things. He has his way. He sets over the nations and over there, the basis of sorts. He is the Lord God Almighty. And he says, see now that I, even I am he. What's the whole work for? What's the work of the ministry for? What is that work? To reveal who he is, to give him the glory due into his name. Bottom line, that's it. Somebody said, well, I believe you just win souls. That's the greatest thing you can do. Well, it is a wonderful thing. He that wins souls is wise. But the greatest thing you can do is give Jesus the glory due unto his name. That is the only true heart that you can do and have toward Jesus is giving him the glory due unto his name. See thou that there's no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is that any can deliver out of my hands. Oh, my Lord. He said, I'm going to lift up my hand to heaven. Jesus said, if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no, you, the kingdom of God's come nigh to you. You've seen, it's not me. I, the words that I speak are not mine. The Father that dwelleth in me, he's the one doing works. You've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and my Father are one. John 10, 30, that's exactly what he's saying here. And that's the reason why the revelation of Jesus Christ with seals, trumpets, and vials in Revelation 15, the song of Moses, which this song is, and we must sing it, we will have the knowledge of this, what will happen to us, and this understanding that we would consider our latter end. You want a word of prophecy? That's a more sure word of prophecy. Don't have to hear some prophecy, thus saith the Lord. That is the Lord God Almighty. That you may know, thus saith the Lord of my servant, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall be after me. God formed himself a body of flesh and blood. See now that I, even I am he, God thy Savior, I am the Lord thy Redeemer. He says what? There's no God beside me with me. He says here, rejoice, O you nations, with his people. Why? Because he's going to avenge the blood of his servants. Why? Because a lot of us are going to seal our testimony with our own blood, overcoming the Antichrist by the, uh, by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. We love not our lives unto the death. Right? Says the Spirit, blessed is he that dieth in the Lord. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, their works do follow them. Sealing our testimony with our own blood. He's going to render, uh, render vengeance to his adversaries. Moses came and spake all the words of this song. That's the song of Moses. Uh, that song of Moses uh, that literally stood uh, there. We see here, you're going to see in Deuteronomy 33, it's going to go into the things spoken of over the people of God in the last days. What, uh, there's so much here, it would take uh, six, eight hours to go through. But take a look here. One thing is nice, Deuteronomy 33, 8, let thy tumim and thy urim. Only one time in the Word of God, he switches a urim and tumim and puts let thy tumim and urim. Why? Because uh, the urim is the fire of the Holy Ghost and the tumim is perfections. Why? 
Has he switched it because now the bride of Christ, the body of Christ is coming to perfection that we presented as a chaste virgin at the marriage supper of the Lamb, the bride, and the body of Christ is coming to perfections and then the fire. He has reversed it because the body of Christ has come unto perfection. Oh, I want you to see here in Exodus 15, they song of Moses began when they came out of uh, Egypt. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song. That's the song of Moses. It began when you came up out of the world and you were baptized, repented and baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and received the Holy Ghost. You came into the wilderness journey. Pilgrims and strangers in this world. And that's the song there that came out. Then you sang that song of Moses in the last of days, uh, the end of days, uh, before going over Jordan. That is the work of God revealed in and through the body of Christ. You can see that song of Moses coming out of Egypt. And what that means to us right there is that Egypt is the world. And uh, to come over that, that Reed Sea, the Red Sea, Here's Egypt over here. There's the world. You took out of by the Paschal Lamb. That is the Feast of Passover. You came over there three days later. You were at the Red Sea, the Reed Sea. When you went across there, there was a wilderness of 40 years in here. That's the reason Jesus started his ministry with 40 days fasting. He ended with 40 days after his passion. This is the 40 as testing trials and temptations. <laughs> you don't go directly from the world into the promised land. The wilderness is there to see if we love the Lord like God with all our heart, soul, and might. And that song of Moses was sang right here coming out of Egypt. Uh, and it was song of Moses again here at the Jordan River, if you will, bookends at the beginning and the ending of the work of God in and through you, the body of Christ. As you can see, when you're in the world, to come out of that world and be you separate, we must turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, just like that altar or burnt offering, the brazen altar and the labor, and uh, then you come into the church, the sanctuary, the holy place. Then you had on the south end the, the candlestick, seven golden candlesticks, and then a table of shoe bread, two rows, six in each row. You had the altar of incense, a golden censer, and then you came into the most holy place where you had the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat testimony, uh, that is the testimony, cherubim of glory here and here. Well, it speaks of Egypt. It's the outer court. It speaks of the world. What happened here that first season is Passover, and uh, that is that first engraving of a signet. You become a child, and we have to be fed the milk of the Word of God as uh, a newborn babe's desire than sincere miracle of the word that they may grow thereby. Well, in 1 John 2, it says, I write unto you little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. Why? Because you repented and you were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You are born of the water here. Acts 2, 38 in that first port. Uh, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ that the body of the sins of the flesh might be destroyed by baptism, the circumcision of the heart. Then you went into the wilderness. This is the church age, which we have been in for some 2,000 years, two days. Well, here you're going to seek the Holy Ghost, and it was going to read the good word of God, and uh, the ram of dedication is your consecration prayer and dedication to the Lord at the altar of incense, your golden censer. Then there comes another, another higher glory. Well, here you've been repented, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, get the Holy Ghost. Now you're in the world to overcome the world. You now are, and that was 40 years in the wilderness, and in this church age of testing and trials, there he said, I'll write unto you young men. Well, we've grown from children to young men. Why? Because you have known the Father. You know who Jesus is, that he is the Father of glory. You have that revelation. But there's, that is the breastplate of judgment. It is engraving of a signet on the breastplate. This one was upon the shoulders of the high priest according to birth, Exodus 28. Here you have it upon the breastplate of judgment which is the engravings of a signet, that sign being Jesus Christ. As we said before, that signet is the sign, Jesus Christ, with the aloft top, which is a Hebrew ABC theory from A to Z. It's all the attributes of God from the aloft through the top, the Alpha and Omega, 
the uh, A through the Z. Jesus is all. Well, then there remains one more. This is where the church is at now. This is where the body of Christ is at now. And there remains one more engraving of a signet in the forehead. And in the forehead, that is uh, the mitre's crown, and it is engraving of a signet upon the mitre upon the forehead of the priest, Exodus 28. Well, here, now he said, I write unto you fathers. First John, do I write unto you fathers? John, uh, then his epistle, I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. What is that him? It's a son of man revelation. It is the word. It is the, the glory. It is the life, the light. It is that heavenly bread that came down from heaven uh, that if a man will eat, he will live. Jesus is that bread of life. He is that son of man. No man is sent up to heaven. He came down from heaven, son of man, which is in heaven. There's three different engravings. The ceiling there. And that forehead in Revelation 7 is that final sealing of the church. Somebody said, we were sealed by the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. Yeah, that's where you were here in that second uh, engraving of a signet. You're sealed by the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption, but there remains one more sealing again. You're saved, being saved, and will be saved. That is salvation, sanctification, your ultimate glorification. Three different steps. Well... It's exactly what we had here in the Song of Moses and the beginning of bookends when you came up out of Egypt. That's when you came up and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, repented, and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the heart being circumcised, the body of the sins of the flesh destroyed by baptism, Colossians 2, 10 through 12. Then you literally came through the wilderness. Then what happens? You're going then from the wilderness, going through this world, pilgrims and strangers, until your final...